The Cowboys have signed yep. Alden Smith. One year deal, $2 million base, $2 million in sack incentives. Alden Smith will be 31 years of age come September. Originally, he was the seventh overall pick in the National Football League. And for his first four years for the 49ers, he was as dominating a pass rusher as there was in this league. But Alden Smith has not played a single game since November 15th of 2015. Why? Uh, because of multiple suspensions for violating the NFL substance abuse policy and its personal conduct policy. We're talking about DUIs, one involving hit and run. We're talking about weapons charges. We're talking about multiple domestic violence issues. We're talking about multiple rehab stints. But our very own Jay Glazer has been involved in Alden Smith's latest recovery program. And Jay said last night via tweet that Alden Smith has been clean and sober for the last nine months. And now I'm, I'm still quoting Jay here. And that it's incredible how much he has turned his life around. So Alden Smith is now filed for reinstatement into the National Football League. And I ask you, Mr. Sharp, Pro Football Hall of Famer. Yes. Will this gamble pay off for Jerry Jones? Skip, before I address the football side of this, let me first start by saying hopefully Alden Smith has cleaned up that side of his life. Hopefully he has chased these demons away because, if Skip, if you look at it, his first two years, he had 33, if I'm not mistaken, 33 and a half sacks, which was the second most since the sack became an official stat in 1982 behind Reggie White and Derek Thomas. And we know how dominating of players they were. But so hopefully, because he has some demons, Skip, that was that weed wasn't involved. We now we know he got suspended. He failed a drug test and all that other stuff. But there are some things that happen outside of that that we believe that there was something more heavily involved than marijuana. Now, with that being said, Skip, if it's hard for me to believe a guy can miss the amount of time that Alden Smith has missed and come back and be dominant like he was. Skip, we saw Josh Gordon miss a year, and he was never the same. Can you imagine missing four years where you haven't been playing football? You haven't skipped football probably was the furthest thing from his, from his mind. He's trying to reconcile and get his life together. Hopefully, like Jay said, he's been clean the last nine months. But, Skip, it's just hard for me to believe. Skip, we remember when Michael Jordan took a year and a half off. Skip, that first year back, that first, what, half a year back, Skip, he wasn't even close to being the Michael Jordan that we saw. And then he took the three years off. Now, mind you, he was later in it, later, he was, what, 30, probably, what, 36, 37, 38 when he came back that second time, Skip. So we understand that Adam Smith does have the, uh, the element of age on his side. But, Skip, you start missing time like that. Look at Tiger. When Tiger took that time off, how Tiger look? Yes, he could have spots and spells where he's dominant, but we haven't seen that dominant, dominant player. So it's going to be very interesting to see if he can recapture what he once was. Skip, remember, now, he came out in that 2011 draft. We know that arguably is the greatest draft ever because if you look at Cam went one, Bob Miller went two, and Richard Sherman was in that draft, and J.J. Watt was in that draft, and Julio and A.J. Green. Skip, we know the names. Adam Smith went seven overall. So that tells you what the 49ers thought of him, and he was rewarding them handsomely until the demons got a hold of him and he couldn't get control of his life. So I really hope he turned that side of his life around and he can get back on the field because I do believe he deserves a second chance and hopefully he can cash in on that. But to answer your question, is this long shot going to work? Skip, if you really look at it, the only long shot that Jerry Jones has signed since he's on that team has worked is Charles Haley. You look at the Greg Lawrence and the Pac-Man Jones and all these other guys that he's signed, Skip, they haven't panned out. Haley panned out. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this pans out. Okay. You make many, many, too many good points. But I'm going to say, just barely, that I like this move. I'm going to say, just barely, I believe this move will pay off for Jerry Jones and my Dallas Cowboys and yet I'll be the first to admit to you, Shannon Sharp, 
maybe I'm as desperate for a pass rusher as they clearly are because they hope right. to keep Robert Quinn, who was their, their number one sack artist last year, opposite Demarcus Lawrence, who did not live up to his $100 million contract that he had just gotten going into last year. But they lost Robert Quinn because the, the Bears, I think, way overpaid for him. And there's no way Jerry Jones could even begin to compete with that kind of offer. So all of a sudden, there's a pretty gaping hole on the other side of the defensive line. So they went out and they got, obviously, Gerald McNeil and Dontari Poe, two McCoy. very established, proven veterans that, that could anchor the middle of the line. They're much bigger players. They're more in the elephant range than anything Dallas had under Rod Marinelli. So they're saying, okay, we're going to anchor our defense against the, the run game. And both those guys can get to the passer on occasion. They're both up there in age, but they were both bargain basement steal of deals. And they're hoping Demarcus Lawrence bounces back. And they said, okay, let's take a fairly low risk money shot on an Alden Smith for two reasons. And again, low risk money because it's just 2 million base, which is not going to break the salary cap back of the Dallas Cowboys if he doesn't work out or if he doesn't contribute at all. So who am I betting on here? I'm betting on, number one, our man Jay Glazer and his assessment. And number two, Shannon, I'm betting on Jim Tom Sula, who was Alden Smith's coach for his four years in San Francisco, his defensive line coach. And just recently, as you know, when they changed coaches, Mike McCarthy comes in, Mike Nolan is the defensive coordinator, they hired Jim Tom Sula to coach the Cowboy defensive line, and I'm pretty sure he had heavy input, input into this decision to bring back Alden Smith, take a, a flyer on him, probably because Jim Tom Sula is vouching for his, you know, just his football character, his heart, whatever. Jim right. probably knows this kid pretty to very well and said, I believe in his recovery. I believe he's been clean and sober for nine months, and I believe there's still a lot left in that tank. So now to your point, Jerry Jones, as we know, Daddy Jerry has always considered himself sort of the Father Flanagan of the National Football League. <laughs> I can save the souls of these troubled players. And it started with, as you said, Charles Haley, I'll get to that in detail in just a moment. But as you recall, it's been Pac-Man Jones, it's been Tank Johnson. It's been Alonzo Spellman. It's been Greg Hardy. It's been Rolando McClain. It was Randy Gregory. Jerry took a second round pick flyer on Randy Gregory and he's had his moments, but he's now currently suspended and has filed for reinstatement. And I'm hoping Randy maybe has an even better chance of contributing than Alden Smith does because Randy Gregory under the new CBA, I think Randy's issues we're, we're mostly marijuana, at least that's what I've been told. Mm -hmm. Don't know that for a fact. But if they're just marijuana, as you know, Shannon, the, the new CBA says you cannot be suspended for a positive marijuana test. Well, that was a big gain by right. the players. They lost in a lot of other ways, but they did win that one. So maybe the Cowboys right. will win because Randy Gregory will get reinstated and maybe he can stay eligible under the new CBA if he continues to have marijuana, quote unquote, issues, or if he just wants to continue to smoke for whatever reason. So to me, mm -hmm. if Jim Tom Sula has vouched and Jay Glazer has vouched, and real quick, Shannon, before I give the ball back to you, Jay Glazer was the co-founder of a program called MVPs. It's, it's Merging Vets and Players, and it's, it's veteran, you know, war veterans um, who have struggled mm -hmm. with psychological mental issues have connected with pro football players having the same issues to try to figure out how to beat their demons together. So in that program overseen by Jay Glazer has been Alden Smith. So Jay's got some particular insight into the situation. And Jay was so strong last night in his tweets, so adamant that Alden Smith has found himself and at least is holding off his demons as we speak that I'm saying, okay, worth a shot. And, and maybe it is a fairy tale, storybook sort of turnaround story because Alden Smith then posts on Instagram a picture of him signing the deal. 
in saying that he's blessed and thankful to be a Dallas Cowboy. So, so I'm going to say I'm, I'm barely good with this move, and I do think it might pay off a little bit, if not a lot. Your thoughts? Yeah, you're, you're, you're exactly right, Skip. The reason why they made this move is that they lost Robert Quinn, and they thought Robert, they could get Robert Quinn back on a similar deal in which they signed him the first year. They gave him probably about $8 million. But when Chicago came in and swooped in and gave him $70 million, about $30 million fully guaranteed, there was no way they were going to be able to compete with that. And plus, Chicago have Khalil Mack on the other side. They needed someone when Khalil Mack could get double teamed, he can beat one-on-one -on -one pressure, and Robert Quinn can still do that, especially on turf. Now, we saw his, uh, his production suffer on grass when they moved to L.A., but as long as he's on that turf, he's a fast surface. Skip, you make some very good points, and I hope you're right. But Jerry's looking at this, Skip. There's really no downside because that $2 million they're talking about, it's not like that money is guaranteed. So there's, not, there's a possibility he might not even make it, and so there's no harm, no foul. But as you mentioned, Jerry has this, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe, you know, if, if maybe Jerry is a, a, a very religious man, Skip, and we don't know anything about it. And maybe a part of him owning the Dallas Cowboys is to try to help wayward souls. And for me, Skip... I don't even know why you tested for marijuana. If you're not going to suspend the guy, it's kind of like speeding, Skip. If you're not going to write me a ticket for speeding, why the hell are you stopping me? Just let me go about my business and don't worry about pulling me side of the road, tying up my time. I got somewhere to be. Well, if you're not going to suspend guys for marijuana uh, a violation, why the hell are you testing for it? Just let them go on about their business as long as they show up on Sunday. That seemed all the only care to, the owners cared about anyway, Skip, is because... Their star players were missing games, and America said, man, weed's okay, it's just a plant. We'd rather them smoke marijuana than get hooked on pills and some of these other deadly drugs. So I get that side of it, Skip. But as you mentioned, if you look at all the games, that, guys that you mentioned, from Alonzo Spellman to Greg Hardy to Tank Johnson to Pac-Man Jones, and Jerry Jones, 30-plus years of owning this team, only one flyer. And if you want to say a flyer, because Charles Haley was, was a, a multiple-time All-Pro, a multiple-time uh, Pro Bowl player, he had just run his course in San Francisco. He did not like the head coach. I forget his name, Skip. Uh, uh, George Seifert. He and George Seifert, yeah. he said, he believed that once George Seifert became the head coach, he changed because Seifert was his defensive coordinator, Skip, and he had, didn't have a problem. But the moment Seifert became a head coach, for whatever reason, he and Charles started bumping heads. And he had to go, Skip. You know some of the things, and it's never been reported publicly, but you know some of the things that Charles was doing. Once he got to Dallas, for whatever reason, he got in an environment that they had Dion and they had Mike and they had some of these other guys, and they embraced who he was, and he didn't give them any problems. But he's the only guy of all the flyers that Jerry has taken a chance on that's really paying out. Okay, so thank you for bringing up Charles Haley because I was there in Dallas covering the Cowboys when that deal went down. And in fact, I wound up writing a book that heavily involved that deal because that's the one mm -hmm. deal that I always gave general manager Jerry Jones full credit for making. Because as you remember, Shannon, right. Jimmy Johnson was the coach of the Cowboys then. Jimmy was anti making that deal. And I, I did not blame Absolutely. Jimmy Johnson for being against it because it was scary because the 49ers, a conference rival, had completely given up on Charles Haley and said way too, too, way too high of risk for the reward that you do get from Charles Haley, who was obviously a very good and became a great player in Dallas. But Jerry Jones said mm -hmm. no. We can steal him from Carmen Policy, who was then the GM running the 49ers. And he is the right. missing link. He is the last piece to the puzzle for us to go win a Super Bowl, which they ended up doing a year before anybody thought they could after that 92 season. And it was Jerry pushing that deal through, forging it, and, and actually forcing Jimmy to take him on. And then to your point, yes. they didn't have Dion yet. Obviously, they wouldn't get him until 95. Yeah. But that locker room was strong enough with Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Darren Woodson, and others Emmett. running the show in the mm -hmm. locker room. And Emmett, yeah. Emmett wasn't a, the strongest leader. He was more of a follower. But, but here came Charles. And just because he got out from under 
a, an ugly situation in San Francisco. And to your point, we can't even talk about the incidents. They're, they're so ugly, <laughs> they're not repeatable on television. No, and, and it, it no. had gotten to that point. And, and Charles, I think he'd be the first to tell you he had some psychological issues going on. I'm not sure exactly yeah, how they were diagnosed, but he had issues. Yeah. And he spoke. Yeah, Charles. Skip, he's, had he's, a, he's spoken. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, Skip, he's spoken about some of the things that he didn't get the proper diagnosis and he probably needed medication and he's since gotten on. Yeah. But 49ers had nobody in that locker room from a player standpoint that knew how to deal with Charles. So you look at what they had in right. their locker room, Skip. They, uh, uh, Steve, I mean, I think Joe was still there at the time, but Joe and Steve and Jerry, those guys couldn't handle him. You had to have a dominant personality. You had to go because if you had to fight Charles, you had to fight him. Because he was going to test you, Skip. Charles Haley, I know him, been in the Hall of Fame, been around him a lot, Skip. He will test you. And if you, do, if you let him break down your barriers, he will run over you every single day. The Cowboys had guys in their locker room that when they put their barrier up and say, Charles, do not cross this barrier, he knew they meant business and he wouldn't cross it. The 49ers had nobody in there. Yeah. So the, the old saying, he crossing the Rubicon, you going too far? He would go too far in the 49ers, and there was no one that would push back against him. Okay. Remember, Ronnie Lott was like his big brother figure early on in San Francisco. Then Ronnie was yes. gone, and Charles was gone Correct. psychologically. So here he comes to Dallas, and he was absolutely the catalyst. They could not have won the Super Bowls. that They won nope. two in a row without Charles Haley. And then not only... Did Jimmy then obviously fall out with Jerry and Jerry fired Jimmy, but Charles fell in love playing with Barry Switzer and he would have run through the locker room wall for Barry Switzer. So Dallas benefited hugely from a deal that Jerry did push through. And in the end, Charles mm -hmm. Haley wasn't just a good player. He was an all time great player. I campaigned for him to be in the Hall of Fame, even though to your point, Shannon, he pushed me constantly. I did a radio show in Dallas. He would call <laughs> into my radio show and just ridicule me and insult me personally. And yet I, I just, I, I became such a fan of his mm -hmm. as a player that the personal didn't matter to me because you're right. Mm -hmm. all, all of the psychological baggage was left behind at the locker room door on Sunday because this man would play mm -hmm. football. And I've often said that just watching TV, watching the Cowboys, he, he was unblockable. I would watch two players attempt, sometimes three, attempt to control him. He was too quick, mm -hmm. too strong, too savvy, too nasty. He was one of the all-time great pass rushers, may, maybe right there with Lawrence Taylor coming off the edge as a disruptor. Mm -hmm. So the point was... Charles Haley didn't take four years off. He took no years off. He took no time off because the right. Cowboys got him late in training camp, straight from the 49er right. training camp, and here they went. So that was one right. situation. This is quite different because four years is four years. In fact, I just can't remember anybody taking four years off from a sport and coming even. back and being mm -hmm. any good. And, and the closest thing mm -hmm. we've seen is, is the Tim Tebow baseball experiment where he, he went from junior year of high right. school to age 30 before he tried to play baseball, and then he tried to do it at the pro level, and he's hanging in Correct. there and hanging on, but it's hard, and it takes time, and yet I, I think Jim Tom Sula is saying, hey, the, the fire can burn in this kid, now, now 30, I'm on, you know, going on 31 years of age, but I think Tom mm -hmm. Sula is saying, we, we can salvage whatever's left in him and that he is definitely worth the shot. Because, Shannon, as you recall, coming out, we're talking about 6'5", 265, ran 4'7 mm -hmm. at the combine, and, and he had it all. He's, he's got Charles Haley. In fact, he wears number 99, he Haley wore 94. But he, he reminds me a little of Charles Haley in the way he leans in off the edge and, and just becomes unblockable. Yeah. Skip, you took the words right out of my mouth because they listed Charles as an elephant position. That was what his position was. And Alvin Smith, that long, angular body before, obviously, Charles has gotten up in the age and he's a little heavier now, but that's who he reminds you of. Yeah. He can bend the edge. He yeah. has more power than you think because you think he's going to bend the edge on you and he bulls over the top of you. Skip, I hope 
he can have just a resemblance because the likelihood of him coming back being that dominant, 33 and a half sacks, he had night in his second year, he had 19 and a half sacks. So that goes to show you just how dominant that of a player he was. Skip, if he can come back and get a resemblance of that, it helps the Cowboys, and hopefully it can keep him on the straight and narrow because it's, it's kind of hard, Skip. It's like once you get, and uh, I, I think they fought really hard, that when these guys were getting suspended, you're taking the thing away from them, which is the team, which is what they consider family, and you're isolating them. So hopefully he can get back with the Cowboys, get around some players, get around some teammates, friends, and he can stay on that straight path, straight path, pass, and he can path, excuse me, and he can continue to build his career. But Skip, it's gonna be Skip. Four years, his last game was 2015. Skip, that's a long, long time. Mm. And as I open this topic, talking about. It's a long, long list of issues, legal issues. And Shannon, I'll be the <laughs> first to admit, the ones that concern me the most are the domestic violence issues, and he had several of them. Then he ended up right. having a fight with Colin Kaepernick that, that erupted into a practice field fight over a woman. Then there was an issue at the woman's house involving Colin Kaepernick and his car, vandalism, it was a mess. His whole life has been a mess. Mm -hmm. But Shannon, from all that I hear, the biggest problem has been alcohol. You could be right about other drug use, but alcohol has been the number one demon from start to finish. And again, I'm going back and I'm, I'm trusting our man Jay Glazer, as I always do. And he's saying clean and sober for nine months. Well, that's certainly a start. That doesn't mean he can't fall off the wagon today or tomorrow. But right. I, I have a good feeling because Jay has a great feeling about this. So I've got two shots, but both require reinstatement. I've got Randy Gregory. And by the way, quick point on Randy Gregory. <sighs> Shannon, I, I was around Alden Smith twice. This was on first take at ESPN. He came on the show twice. And he was a troubled young man. And you could just tell being around Alden Smith that he was having big issues. In fact, one time on the air, I thought Alden Smith was going to punch me over something I said to him that I didn't think was all that controversial or negative. <laughs> he had a quick trigger, quick temper, and he was scary to be around. From all I've heard about mm -hmm. Randy Gregory, he's just the opposite. He has a big, good heart. He's had a marijuana problem. My friend Herman Edwards was, was like a, a, a mentor to Randy Gregory and willingly said, I, I'll try to take over for him and, and help him get back on the straight and narrow and, and became like a big brother, a guiding light to Randy Gregory. And Herm used to tell me he's such a great kid. Well, I'm not sure anybody ever said Alden Smith was such a great kid, but Randy Gregory <laughs> has more potential probably right now to, to bounce back and, and be productive for a longer period of time, maybe than Alden Smith does. But, but Alden Smith, if he has beaten the alcohol demon and at least can stiff arm it, can keep it at bay, then I think he still right. has a chance to, 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 I don't know, to contribute as a pass rusher, maybe even right. just in rotation. And maybe if you see some mm -hmm. glimpses of the old Alden Smith, maybe it'll be worth the shot. So now we got two players. Isn't this vintage Dallas Cowboys? We got two players yeah. that are big X factors, but heavily de depended on, and neither has even been reinstated by Roger Goodell. And it's going to come down to Roger Correct. saying, okay, I buy into Alden Smith, and okay, I buy in to Randy Gregory. Okay, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm not, I can't even jump to the conclusion they're even going to be on the team next year until... Commissioner says yes. Reinstatement. Your thoughts. Right. Skip, what, what if uh, Commissioner called Jerry and he, Jerry, you remember that time that you were trying to oust me as commissioner of the NFL? You remember that time you tried to sue mm -hmm. me? I think I'm going yeah. to hold off a little while long on these reinstatements to send you a message. Don't mess with this. Because, Skip, you remember that Sports Illustrated, they called Commissioner Goodell the sheriff. There's a new, sh uh, was, it, was it Time Magazine or I think it was, might have been Time Magazine, Skip. They said there's a new sheriff in town. 
It's like, I, maybe I need to remind you just who I am. He was voted the most powerful sports figure in the world. But he's he not is. like that, Skip. I know, I know Commissioner very well. He's, he's not like that. But as you mentioned, everything is going to come down to whether he puts his name on that reinstatement papers. Roger Goodell signs off on Randy Gregory and Alden Smith. Okay, they're eligible to play in the 2020 season. Everything is predicated on his stamp of approval. Okay, last point on this is Greg Hardy. I was on the other show that I mentioned on ESPN when that came down, when Jerry mm -hmm. took a flyer on Greg Hardy, but it was so different then, right. Shannon, because Greg Hardy had been convicted by a judge in North Carolina of violence against his ex-girlfriend. And it, it, if you remember the charges, it was graphic. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. said no to Greg Hardy. In fact, I said on television, Jerry, I'm ashamed of you, and now you're making me ashamed of my Dallas Cowboys that you're giving this man a chance to play football again after that happened. And the only reason that he was suspended for only four games was because, as you know, in North Carolina, you can, if you lose the bench trial, then you can seek a jury trial, which he did. And Correct. the victim, Correct. according to prosecutors, did not show up for the jury trial for of Greg Hardy because, according to the prosecutors, the victim had accepted a settlement from Greg Hardy, and the prosecutors said, there's nothing else we can do. So that's how he got off a conviction by, in the bench trial. And remember, he did mm -hmm. play then, let's see, four. he missed four. He played 12 games that year. And he had 35 tackles and six sacks. It wasn't bad. But you know what, Shannon? That wasn't worth it. I'm going to hope right. that it's been long enough for Alden mm -hmm. Smith that he has redeemed himself, that he has recovered from the alcohol that fueled his rage against women. And I'm going to be barely, barely okay with this right here, right now. So I'm going to say... Thumbs kind of up. I'm going to go thumb barely up on this deal. <laughs> and I think you're I, I think you're giving me a thumb sideways, maybe, right? You're kind of neutral on it. I, <laughs> I don't hear you condemning the deal, right? Well, Skip, I just, want, I, I just hope the young man, like I said, I just hope the young man can battle these demons every single day, Skip, because we know once these demons get a hold of you, sobriety is a step-by-step, -step, a day-by-day -day process. You can't look for two weeks or three weeks or a month in advance. You got to go day by day. You're going to have to go by places that sell alcohol every single day and see the open sign up, on, and drive right past it. And so hopefully, I just wanted the kid to get a second chance. I believe he deserves a second chance, and hopefully he can cash in and make good of it. I, I can't tell you how much I second that emotion and take it from a guy who was in Dallas for whatever it was, 17 years, Dallas can be sin city for Dallas Cowboys because everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody wants to buy you a drink or get you whatever <laughs> recreational drug of choice that you want. So it can be a very dangerous place because the Cowboys are so idolized in Dallas, Texas. But I'm pulling for him and I'm pulling for Randy Gregory. And obviously, I continue to pull for my Dallas Cowboys. And barely, I say, way to go, Jerry Jones. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.